Hello and welcome to part 7 of the Airworthiness Management and Aircraft Records series. My name is Jack Tunnell and I'm your host for this series. Time, as an aircraft record, competes against the equipment list as the most poorly kept aircraft record. As shown, there are only two types of time described by the FAA. Flight time is for pilots and flight operations. It's been called all sorts of names by various people and organizations. It does mean a flight. If you reject a takeoff before liftoff, it is not a flight. If you get into the air, even for a second or two, the whole thing, including all the taxi, run up, two seconds of flight, the taxi back, and all until you shut the airplane down, count as flight time comes to arrest, I believe, means shutdown, because before that, you could still move. Those minutes or seconds don't really matter except to the pilot's logbook and possibly billing. Time in service, as shown, is liftoff till touchdown, and in many aircraft, that is very hard to capture. As indicated, it is responsibility of the owner or pilot as the operator to keep the time records. It doesn't say may, it says shall, so there's no getting out of it. This shouldn't be required, but here it is anyway. It is not a record unless it is written or captured in an accurate permanent form. The challenge is how you gather the time data. It takes an incredible level of focus and attention to detail to gather time and service data without some form of help. Aircraft with weight on wheels signals or a squat switch can drive a Hobbs meter and be accurate. Many EFA systems can record specific time from a weight on wheels signal. Without weight on wheels information, you must rely on something else. The EFIS in my fixed gear experimental starts recording when the indicated airspeed is over 40 knots and the engine is running. The extra time in service that I accrue is seconds per hour so I can live with the loss. A Hobbs meter attached to the oil pressure and alternator input will record more time in service than you actually accrue, so it will hurt you in 100-hour inspection, cost per hour, and any other hourly maintenance, service, or inspection costs. If you use a recording tack, you will record more or less than actual time in service depending on how hard you run your engine and how long your warm-up and taxi is. Errors in time recording can cost you in resale value. Advisory Circular 43.9 gives the FAA guidance that relying on devices like these is not the same as keeping time and service in the aircraft records. I suggest keeping your destination records, if you keep them, separate from official time records unless you don't care if the next owner can see your travel locations and trends. Depending on the inspection program and airworthiness limitations for your airframe and engines, you may need to log landings and cycles also. I record my accumulated aircraft time on this form to track both flight time and time in service. I also have some room to record inspection or maintenance action next due reminders. I'm a VFR flyer, so I don't track VOR accuracy. Here's another form that adds a place to record your Part 91.171 VOR checks. As I've mentioned before, these forms are easy to create in Excel or other spreadsheets or form makers. The thing is to record your times per flight or flight day to create a usable aircraft record as part of an audit proof record system. I suggest reviewing your math at least by the end of each sheet I've seen hundreds of hours in landings added or lost with an addition error or transposition. If this gets audited, you want to be correct. Send me an email if you want a copy of one of mine. I'll send you the form in a PDF. You can see that I use and believe in the utility of a three ring binder to organize my aircraft records. If any section becomes unwieldy, I move the old records to a file for the aircraft. Send any questions in an email and I'll try to answer you directly and your question may make its way into a future video. Thanks for watching.